there's seven spots that you'll want to inspect on your Express or Savannah van to find any water leaks happening inside. I'm going to show you all seven and how to fix a couple of them. Let's check it out. So one of the first spots I don't actually have on this van would be the OnStar antenna. It's a shark fin, is what they call it, and it'll be right up on the driver's side, right in that area. There's a lot of reports that water leaks in from there, and then you'll actually see it leaking down from your sun visor. Another spot to check for leaks is any aftermarket add-ons on the roof. This van had a work light on it before I bought it, I believe, and you never would have known without going up and looking at it. There was just some little tiny uh, mounting point up there, and eventually the rubber seal around it did end up leaking. So what I had to do is find a half-inch plug. You can see right there siliconed it in and took care of that leak. A third spot to check for any leaks is going to be the windshield. And you might think my windshield's not cracked, it's not going to leak. Well unfortunately that's not the case. A lot of times when there's a replacement windshield installed, since it's such a giant area that needs to be sealed around when they lay down the window weld, the sealant that installs the windshield, sometimes they'll miss a corner or miss a spot and you'll actually get water running in down through the windshield and you really won't be able to tell from the inside until you remove your A-pillar trim. Now these are pretty easy to remove. It's just two clips, one right about there and another one somewhere down in that area. So just pull it towards the center of the van and that takes it off. For the passenger side, it has the grab handle. All that you need to do is stick a screwdriver pop these all the way out. You just keep pulling until they don't pull anymore. They'll come out about an inch and a half. You can pull that out. And then there's the same two clips, one behind it about right there, one down there, and then just pull the whole thing towards the center of the van. And with that done, now you can see the seam of the windshield and you should be able to tell if any water is leaking in. Have someone spray the outside with a hose or run it through the car wash and you'll be able to figure that out pretty quick. It's also possible that it rusts up on the top of the windshield where the window seam is, and then you'll start getting a wet headliner with that. Number four is where my van was leaking, which is the wiper cowl clips. The black piece underneath the windshield wipers is called the wiper cowl, and there's two little clips on both the driver's and passenger side and here's exactly what they look like and what it looks like when they leak. So windshield's being sprayed right now and look at that. Right down here in the corner of the windshield. That's exactly where it's coming in from. Just remove the wiper cowl here and right down on the bottom that is going right inside. I can see the inside of the van through there. And this hole right here as well. Disgusting. So I gooped in some black silicone there. Put a piece of plastic siliconed in there. Another plastic clip was right there. I filled that with silicone. And just for fun, just put three little silicone dabs down on the bottom where the screws go through the cowl. So we'll put it all back together. Number five is the cowl drain. That's gonna be the drain for all the water that runs down off of your windshield. It's gonna go down into that wiper cowl area. And there's actually a drain down underneath. This is where the air gets sucked in for your HVAC system for your vents. And what happens if this cowl drain is clogged, all that water that's supposed to go down the drain about in the center of the van, it actually, uh, the drain's clogged, so it goes up and over into the HVAC system, and then it pours into the van through the recirculation door. And here's exactly where that is and what it looks like. So where all the rainwater is supposed to drain, it's not draining, it's actually coming in through here and then this, is the inside where I see the water 
coming through right behind there. And look at this. It's coming in right from, that's the her circulation door right there. So it's filling up in here with water. Once it goes over this lip, then it's fine because it goes down there into the condensation drain for the AC evaporator. But up here is where the problem lies. You can see that standing water right there. And right there is where it's supposed to drain. And you can see it's still standing water. So that's it with the hose on. You can see that no more water is coming up and over into this area. And if it is, it's just a little splash. It's not enough to flood in through the research door. So that's all I did was jam a coat hanger down there. Important thing once you do clear out your cowl drain is to make sure that the seal, there should be a foam seal on the back, the top side of your cowl is intact. If not, you can get some replacement seal, foam seal at Home Depot or Lowe's. Uh, what I did was just use some black silicone along the entire width of it. The purpose of this is to keep any pine needles, any leaves from falling down behind and then down into that cowl area and into the drain clogging it. So here's what the silicone looks like. Simple enough and you really can't tell from uh, far away, but you can definitely see how big of a gap there was there before. So with that, it keeps all the water going up over the cowl, down into the drains there, and then the other one right there. And number six, is the air conditioner's evaporator drain. This is for the condensation off the air conditioner. On a hot day, you see it dripping down. If you don't see condensation dripping down on a hot, humid day with your AC on, then chances are that condensation drain is clogged. It's All you have to do is remove your coolant tank up here. It's a 10 millimeter bolt goes through here and remove the blower motor it's three bolts i think they're five and a half millimeter take off the little vent down there take off your electrical connection pull that out and then you can already see the evaporator core down in there here's a better view of the evaporator core and you can actually see the blower resistor up on top, that green thing. For an easier way to get a view in, you can just take that off. It's only two five and a half millimeter bolts. You can see them right there and there. And what you're looking for is any debris inside. If you see some, take out the blower, clean it out. And you should be able to put a hose in and see the water dripping out of this. It'll be the same HVAC box. It'll be dripping onto the wheel well between this and the battery. And finally, number seven, the last place that you'll want to check for any leaks in your front cabin on your van is going to be a fairly obvious one. It's the door seals. Take a look at your door seals. Make sure that they're all sealed all the way around. If you're driving down the freeway and you hear wind coming in, that's a pretty bad sign. They do make seal conditioner that you can use and it helps to rejuvenate the seals and uh, if they're dried out it will help them swell back up a little bit to seal any air gaps or if they're past the point of no return there's a couple do-it-yourself videos out there on how to fix the door seals but these vans are so plentiful i believe they've been using the exact same door seal from 1996 all the way up to present day at least until 2020 it's the same door seal go to any salvage yard pick up a new set of seals, and call today. So that's all seven of the spots that you need to check if you have any water leaks in your front cabin. I hope you found this helpful. Thanks for watching.